All right, guys, first off, good day as always. Um, today's video is going to be about socialism. Now, we've already talked about in previous videos uh, communism and capitalism, so today we're going to talk about socialism. So here is the warm-up for today's class. So what you're going to do is like you've done before, look at the picture, analyze it, what's going on. Okay, so if you've ever seen someone do this or if you've done it yourself, um, you have an idea of what's going to happen when the fork goes into the electric socket. Okay, uh, if you don't, you think about it. All right, doesn't take uh, much to realize what's going to happen. So knowing that and knowing what the fork represents, what the electrical socket represents, and looking at what the people saying, what do you think this artist is trying to say? Okay, so that's question number two. Again, question number one, what do you see? Analyze the picture, you know, break it down. All right, so once you're done with that, let's start with the notes. Okay, so it's gonna come up right now. All right, so socialism is a form of an economic system in which the government owns the basic means of production, uh, determines the use of the resources, and distributes the products and wages and social services such as education, healthcare, and welfare. All right, now there are three, three main goals when it comes to socialism. Uh, one of them is the distribution of wealth and economic opportunity amongst its people. Uh, another one is uh, society's control through its government of all major decisions about productions. Okay, and the last one is public ownerships of most lands, factories, and other means. So if you go back to the first one, basically they're saying that the distribution of wealth and economic opportunities spread equally among the people basically means that it's not just for one particular group. Or another particular group it's for all in a sense um, society's controlled through its government all major decisions so basically the government isn't saying um, what they're gonna do with product production and some of that uh, basically it's the people have a say in it okay so it's not completely the government thing so it's not like co communism where they can completely control everything you know, and it's not uh, capitalism where the uh, owners of the company controls everything. It's the people. All right. And lastly, uh, public ownership most of most land. Okay. Now, in communism, if you remember, communism, the government owns all the land. And I gave the example that if gold or oil was discovered on your land under communism, you don't get that gold or oil. The state does. Um, so in the communism sense, you don't get nothing. But in a capitalistic or um, socialist uh, sense, you do get that property. You, and whatever is found there, that is, you can get rich off of it. Okay. Now, the idea of socialism sprang up in the 19th century, the industrialized Europe. Um, thing is you have to remember is that this during this time especially in America there was a lot of immigrants coming into this country and the thing is it kind of hurt the working man but it really benefited the factory owners and things like that business owners uh, owners of you know apartments and tenant buildings and some of like that and the people who ultimately paid the price were the working people, the immigrants. You know, they they paid the ultimate price. Um, because the thing is, you have to remember, a lot of these factory places, especially back then, if there were people who were looking for jobs, some of like that, instead of paying somebody a high price, they would tell them, you know what? Instead of being paid ten dollars an hour, they might say, hey, you know, there's some guys over here. They're fresh. They're hungry. They're, you know, they they want to work. I'll let you keep your job, but the thing is, I need you to cut your pay down to like eight dollars. Because if you can't handle that, I know this guy over here will pay. For, he'll work for eight dollars. So a lot of times, a lot of workers would say, "Okay, yeah, you know, I need want to keep my job," so they would take the reduction of pay. 
you know, or some places they would just fire the people and get the uh, the immigrants coming in, but they would pay them low. And if they had a problem with it, no problem. There's somebody else who will take that job because they need it, and they'll work for that low wage. The factory owners are still going to get the production from the people. It's just that they're going to pay less for it. And on top of that, the um, the working conditions were horrible, horrible, especially in the coal mines and factories. It was just horrible. But again, they didn't care because if someone died or someone got hurt, there's somebody else who could take their spot. Easy. You know, somebody is looking for a job. Um, so a lot of times the factory owners didn't care. You know, business people didn't care. As long as they were, the, they were, those people were working and give, making them money, they really didn't care. Now, when it comes to their living conditions at home, same thing. Um, the people who ran the apartments, the tenants, um, buildings and some of that, they didn't care about their people as long as basically they got their uh, month monthly rent. That was it. You know, they didn't care if the there was eight people inside a crammed room. As long as they were getting their rent, no problem. Um, if something happened in the apartment building, you know, toilet busted, something like that, well, you probably did something. You know, what do you want me to do? You know, it tells me you can't handle it, so off you go. So a lot of times the apartment buildings were horrible. The living conditions were horrible, crammed. Um, and it was just really, really hard for a lot of immigrants and working class people and poor people during this time. And the rich people, uh, the factory owners, the owners of... Um, they said buildings and some of that. They they started living really well, while the rest of the people started living poor. So there was a big gap in between the rich and the poor. Okay. Now, some of them rejected uh, capitalism, basically saying that you know these guys they don't care. You know all they care about is themselves. And they kind of favored a violent revolt, saying you know these guys won't listen. We'll force them to listen. And some believed in building a socialist uh, community. And they would share in the equally um, benefits of creating an industry. But here's the problem. In order to create an industry, you need some type of capital, some type of money, something that you can, um, the bank needs as a collateral. That if something, to, to say the business doesn't work, at least the bank will have their money, you know, somewhere or another. And you have to remember, these workers were getting paid pennies to the dollar. I mean, it was just horrible. So even if they gathered all their wealth, they could not really start a business. And that put them in a tricky spot. It really was wishful thinking, but in reality, it wasn't going to work. Now, democratic socialism... This is a way for democratic political system to improve economic conditions without the means of violence. So again, going back to that last bit of notes just a minute ago, uh, this was a way to do it. Now, under this system, the people would have their basic human rights and have some control over the government officials through free elections and uh, multi-party systems. So, it won't be just one political party, it'd be several, um, two, three, or however many. Now, the government would own the basic means of production and make most of the economic decisions. Now, the thing is, there are some countries in the world right now that have this type of government, uh, or the economic system. Uh, Tanzania, Denmark, uh, Norway, and Sweden are all like that. Now, if you took that here into our country, basically the government would control like the steel mills, the shipyards, railroads, airlines, basically any type of means of travel or way to um, move production around again and to creation of production. 
but in the flip side, they would provide health care and medical care to its citizens. Now, some people would say that is a good trade-off. Some people would say, no, that's not right. Um, that's up to you to decide. Okay, it's your opinion. Okay. Now, this this thing made me laugh. Um, now, those who oppose social, socialism say that it takes away from individual incentives. Uh, I'm sorry, initiatives, and also that high taxes hinder economic growth. Um, it kind of doesn't, you know. Um, it does take away some type of initiative, you know. That's you know pretty true, but the hinder economic growth. Um, the thing is, you have to remember, tax money goes to things. All right, it goes to building, uh, rebuilding buildings or creating buildings. Uh, goes to cops, firemen, education, you know, our military, things like that. So the money is being used. And it's being sent off places. Now, granted, a lot of our money, tax money, goes to defense. And, you know, that, that's a big chunk of the pie. But the thing is, the rest of the money does go to people like myself, to teachers. And we, in turn, you know, pay our rent. We buy food. You know, we buy gifts for our students. And we buy gifts and stuff like that for our families and friends. And we spread the wealth. Okay. And that makes the economy grow and that makes the economy move. So when people say that taxes, you know, stunt economic growth, not necessarily, you know, because you have to remember that money does go somewhere. It's not just disappearing. It doesn't just go in the thin air. It's being sent out someplace. All right. Now, some argue that increasing government regulations uh, helps create big government and would eventually the dictatorship. Whether that does or not, that's up to you to decide. Um, but government regulations, this is something we will talk about in economics even more, okay? All right, so here's the thing. No country has a pure capitalistic system. No one, none of them, okay? And if you notice, yes, we went from socialism to capitalism because this is something that I forgot to talk about in the, the capitalistic uh, video. Now, the U.S. main economic task is to preserve the free market. Okay, they don't want people to corner the market. You know, like um, gain a monopoly. You know, it's not just a game; it's a real thing. That they don't want people to control all of one industry, whether that's steel, oil, um, you know, lumber, whatever. They don't want one group to control it all because if one group or one person controls it all, then when there's no competition, they can kick that prices high because nobody can stop them. There's no competition. And if there is competition coming up, they can squash them. They can buy them out. They can do whatever, you know, if there's no other competition. So the government's job is basically to make sure that there is competition. The prices won't skyrocket. And that it's an it's an even playing field. Um, now the government has tried to encourage business competition because again it makes the price of things come down, which helps out the consumer. And private property ownership. They want people to own property. They want them to start businesses and things like that. Um, but yeah, they really want us to have our own home because if we have our own homes, we're going to want to take care of it. We're going to, you know, we're going to invest into it and stuff like that. Also, our government regulates our economics through various ways. One of the biggest ones is the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Um, thing is, they make sure that the product we eat is safe. The products we use, pills and things like that, are safe. Okay, that they won't get us sick. And that's why you hear a lot, a lot about recalls on products and food and stuff like that, because they find out there's something wrong in there. And to prevent a disease or to prevent an illness to spread, they let us know. All right. Now, the governmental influence is this. If a country becomes big enough, they won't be able to produce 
uh, enough of the product so that they'll have to look to trade with other countries. Now, yet there are some countries they've been around forever and a day, you know, so they used up a lot of their lumber, they used up a lot of their product. Um, here in the United States, believe it or not, we actually used to have a lot of oil, but the problem was uh, John Rockefeller started pumping up, and his company started pumping up all kinds of oil from the ground. And what ended up happening is they would sell it dirt cheap because there was so much of it. The problem was, I guess they figured, well, we have an endless amount of oil, but we didn't. So when we basically tapped out in a lot of places around the country, then it's like, well, where are we going to get our oil? So that's why we get our oil a lot of times from the Middle East, you know, because they are um, the source of oil now. So now, because we don't have much oil here, we have to buy it other places. Now, the thing is, some people say, you know what, the little oil we do have here, we should save that just in case for in the future that we may need it. And then there's some people who say, no, we have it now. Let's use it now so we don't have to depend on other people. Um, what is the good decision? That is up to you to decide. Okay. Again, that's an opinionated piece question. What do you think? Okay. The other thing is, I've heard a lot of students ask is, what kind of economy do we have then? If we don't have a, if there is no pure capitalistic economy, if we're not a communist or a socialist country, what are we? We, the United States, is a mixed economy. Uh, that means we have uh, free enterprise, right, combined with the support of the government on decisions in the marketplace. So basically, the people who make things are not just going buck wild and creating a bunch of the, the product so that the value goes down. No, no, no. They make sure they, you're not making too much but you're not making too little you're meeting the demands of the people and they're making sure that competition is there somewhere okay that you know if you get a hamburger that there's not just one place to go to it there's other places you know uh, and the thing is the government really does try to keep competition fair and free okay the reason they do this is to help us. They're not trying to play bully to a company or trying to take over a company. They are trying to make sure that, because remember, if a company has a comp competitor, they're going to try their best to make the product good, get the people what they want, and keep the prices low. That helps us out, the people. It helps us out so much. Okay. So. I believe this may be it. Let me check really quickly. And yep, that's the end of this uh, video. So make sure that your name is on your paper. Uh, and when you come into class, be sure that you actually turn in your notes. Okay, do not hand them to me. Turn them into the basket next to the door. Okay, uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you learned something new. And I'll see you in class. All right. You guys have a good day. Take care.